And despite things going up, up, and up, we're still America's finest city. Yes, I mean, we are. Come on, look at this, right? <laughs> no, this is where we get to live. Obviously, things are costly, right? Yeah. But we can still, for free, go outside and enjoy the view. And so remember, at least we have that. <laughs> there are so many wonderful things to do here, yes. especially when the weekend comes around and it's Friday, everybody. Mm -hmm. So let's get a check on our forecast. Let's that's bring right. Evan Ronnie to the picture. Nothing. Parks, for example. Yes. Yes. I mean, trails. that's gonna be that's gonna be the day when they start charging a fee for no. like you know <laughs> just sitting sessions. on the beach. Go. Oh, oh, I will no. riot in the streets yes. if you they will start be charging. Amped up over that. I will be amped up if they start charging for Kate <laughs> sessions. No, that is my park. Uh, let's take a look at the forecast going into your weekend. Hey, you can spend plenty of time outside. Low 70s for your coastline and inland. Looks like mid 50s are expected over the mountain ranges today. Plenty of sunshine, weak offshore winds, meaning those humidity values are still going to be low, but take a look at the weekend overall. Low 70s for your Saturday. Ridge of high pressure keeps building. Trough of low pressure starts to sink in on Sunday. That'll bring us a few clouds and some cooler temperatures that will really affect us in the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but you're going to have to wait and see. We have some showers on the way for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's a little tease that we call it uh, that we'll be uh, giving you coming up in just a bit as to what that pertains to. Let's talk about traffic, though, as we head through your Friday. Uh, only two things to take you to, and they are in a very similar area. Looks like one just got cleared up. So that right hand shoulder that was blocked where the 94 meets the 805 that has now been cleared. Also, though, a stalled vehicle there on the five southbound, and that is at the Fifth Avenue off ramp. So uh, just one thing uh, with that stalled vehicle likely moving over to the right hand shoulder. Back over to you. Thank you so much. And now this morning, Governor Gavin Newsom making a stop here in San Diego, and it comes as the state is pushing forward with a new endemic approach to the coronavirus. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is live in Del Mar now to explain more on that. The other big issue the governor is addressing today, he's got a lot to discuss here. Yeah, good morning to you both. I mean, a lot of people have been paying attention closely to what Governor Newsom has been sharing over the past couple of days, especially since he will be here today in just a couple of hours at the Del Mar Fairground discussing uh, how to keep gun industries accountable and also safety measures on how to keep Californians safe. But of course, he just announced that endemic plan. I'm going to break down what he shared and how he's saying California is though still in a state of emergency. People are desperate to move past this crisis mode that we've been in for the last few years. People are desperate to get back to whatever semblance of normalcy they, they vaguely may remember. Not walking away. Now, turning the page in California from a pandemic mindset and approaching the coronavirus to an endemic one, he says that there is no end date, but just California is now focusing on prevention, not mandates. Governor Newsom's smarter plan works to make sure Californians have access to necessities like masks, as well as a PCR and rapid test to help mitigate and monitor the virus's spread. Now, the smarter plan, it's an acronym for shots, masks, awareness, readiness, testing, education or keeping schools opened and RX treatments because the governor says a virus will still exist, but it's come more manageable as immunity builds. Now, the plan also includes benchmarks like stockpiling at least 75 million masks and the capacity to perform at least 500,000 tests and administer 200,000 vaccines per day. So saying California isn't moving on, rather just the state is moving forward. Now switching gears here to look at later this morning, Governor Newsom will be here in Del Mar alongside California Attorney General Rob Bonta and legislatures to lift up new efforts to hold the gun industry accountable and advance California's nation leading gun safety measures. They will highlight new efforts to expand the state's nation leading measures to protect Californians from gun violence. Of course, we'll be here um, bringing you updates once that happens around 9 a.m. this morning. We're anticipating a little bit more information on what this means, those gun safety measures for Californians. If you want also a closer look at that endemic plan, you can go to CBS8.com and read all about it on your Friday morning. I'm Dana Marie McNichol live in Del Mar. I'll send it back to you. Dana Marie, thank you so much for that. Well, today marks a new push to fix our roads all across town. So this is a major focus of a new initiative from San Diego's Mayor Todd Gloria. This morning he will launch his Build Better SD plan. CBS 8's Chris Grow live in Paradise Hills with a closer look at all of this and probably a few potholes you had to dodge on the way to your live shot here this morning. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, which is generally going to be kind of the case in in this area here of Rio Drive. There are a number of potholes that are already out. There's that sticky asphalt, that slurry, as well as a lot of those metal plates. In fact, they've got signs up again warning drivers of those metal plates, and that's exactly why the mayor is using this road in particular as sort of that jumping off point, that highlight to get this build uh, better program moving forward with the money that they are going to have for these roads. And so what we are seeing happening today again is the mayor outlining this uh, because you take a road like Rio Drive and according to the county's website, this section of Rio hasn't been worked on by crews since 2009 and some parts haven't seen a fresh layer of asphalt since the original construction in the 60s. So this $40 million project is going to be used to pave roughly 54 miles of road throughout the city. The plan shows specific streets like Rio Drive based on pavement conditions, maintenance history and areas that have been historically underserved. And the main reason uh, we've been hearing from uh, potentially, you know, some businesses and stuff like that is because they do feel that it's hard to attract customers, that it's hard to attract future residents with roads looking like this. The streets are clean, the streets are nicely paved, signs and everything. That is awesome for, for this area, for Paradise Hills, it has been forgotten in a way. And that was an owner of a coffee shop that we spoke with here about the condition of the roads. Again, wanting to see them improve like so many people do. Now, if you are wondering uh, exactly how it is going to be broken up, how many miles of road will be per kind of area will be repaved. Well, each district actually submitted roads for approval to be repaved. You can actually go to our website, cbsa.com, to see how many miles of road per district were approved. Eric and Netta. Useful tool there. All right, Chris Grove, thank you so much for that update. And now take a look right here. Police need your help finding this peeping Tom in the college area who's reportedly targeting young women right near SDSU. This is really disturbing. Take a look here. So far, police only have a vague description of this guy. He's been described as a black man between 30 and 40 years old, six feet tall with a thin build. He has a bald head and was seen wearing prescription style glasses. Police do say there has been five to six cases of this guy peeping into windows at night. It's really scary. There was actually a hole in my blinds that I had to put duct tape over because I was so scared. Yeah, these poor girls. I mean, how creepy is that to uh, see someone staring at you at night? Call police or Crime Stoppers if you have any information about that man. Today, President Biden is set to host a call with NATO allies about the Ukraine crisis. The president says Russia's buildup of more than 150,000 troops on Ukraine's border makes the threat of invasion very high. The Kremlin denied plans to attack Ukraine and accused the U.S. of fear-mongering. Meantime, Russia's foreign minister has accepted Secretary of State Antony Blinken's offer to meet next week. Well, today, SDG&E will conduct a whole house audit for a Carlsbad man who had a bill over $1,000. Sina Shayesta bought a townhouse in Carlsbad last August. His bills have gone up every month from just under $300 to $1,061. He says there aren't any major changes on his end that could lead to that kind of spike. He also says the SDG&E employee he spoke with did not give him the help he needed. She was just telling me, I'm trying to help you. And I said, well, basically you're telling me just shut off my electricity. SDG&E says a technician checked things out at Shiesta's house last week, found nothing wrong, but they will go back out there today. And we will have an update for you on CBS 8 live at 11 a.m. And remember, you can text the word AMPED to 858-571-8888 to see all of our recent AMPED up coverage, to see what you can do about all this, and to give your feedback to SDG&E. Okay, we're going to check in with Evan now. So I, I will say I needed like a big fuzzy sweatshirt to leave the house this yes. morning. It's cold. A parka, right? perhaps. A parka, yeah. You could absolutely. I, I will one. give you full excuse this morning to wear whatever uh, winter jacket that you <laughs> okay. have with you. Uh, because, I mean, hey, low 40s, upper 30s, still pretty chilly uh, when you look at those temperatures overall. At least uh, I know in relative terms that is well below normal for us. Average would be about low 50s. So, hey, we have a little wiggle room to complain a bit in the morning, but no wiggle room 
to complain in the afternoon as we warm up to the above average range. Ridge of high pressure sits off toward the west of us. By the time we get into about Sunday or so, this low starts to sink in and really affect our weather. So after Tuesday, right, we saw that ridge start to build. Wednesday was dry and sunny. We saw those temperatures still a bit cooler. We've been warming since about Wednesday. Uh, we're going to keep that warm up going into tomorrow. Low 70s back in play, but by the time we get into Sunday, this low is really going to affect us. Now, keep in mind, this is not the only one we're watching out for. Take a look at what's happening way up to the north of us by the time we get into early next week. We start to see the influence of this much stronger, cool, dry air coming in from the north, and that is going to drop our temperatures down, not quite as significantly as other parts of the country, of course, with the purple that you see on the screen there, but still dropping us back down to about the 50s. Weak offshore flow is what we have for this morning. Little bit breezy of across the mountaintops, but as we head through the next couple of days, offshore flow is going to be that main direction of that wind, of course, coming from east, moving toward the west. Uh, looking at the next 12 hours, hey, we're sitting in the about low 70s by the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine in the mix today, plenty of sunshine tomorrow, and then it looks like by the time we get into Sunday, we'll start to usher in some clouds before that low that you saw really starts to bring us some showers into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Let's talk about traffic. Just one crash that looks like we've been able to clear. So the two crashes that we were uh, tracking earlier, one actually being a stalled vehicle, other being a crash on the 94 where it means the 805. Both of those have now been cleared. Quick work uh, by those crews. Looks like uh, there are no other major crashes or collisions to start off your Friday morning.